Hey guys! So thank you for tuning in and being a part of the very first uh, geometry class that I'm running online. Um, I'm so sorry that we couldn't go ahead with the um, workshop today in Brisbane, um, but unfortunately, I mean, you obviously know why, but I'm hoping we can get into the classroom soon. Um, but for those of you uh, who are tuning in who just decided because I'm running it online to create this pattern with me, that's completely fine. Um, welcome. And uh, if you have my book handy, Drama Therapy, um, go grab it. It will help you as we're drawing today. Obviously, I'm going to be showing up on the board. Um, but just if you would like a little bit more guidance, it's great to have on hand. And I will be referring to it as well. So, I think we should just get into it. Let's go. Okay, so preferably let's work in size A3 paper. And we're going to work with a 4 4.5 centimeter radius and let's start with a horizon in the middle of the page grab our center point and measure out from that center point 4.5 centimeters you should have two marks on your page obviously I'm going to work on a larger scale once you have your two marks, let's commit to our first circle in the centre of the page. Now if you have my Geometherapy book, grab it and um, turn to page, page one for me. So you'll have the birth of formation. This is what we're drawing. We're going to be drawing the flower of life. And this is going to be the foundation for our pattern. So we always work in a clockwise motion. Well, I always like to work in a clockwise motion. It's really important that you keep a system in geometry. It helps the brain recognize what's happening on the page. So what I'd like to do is create a second circle from the left where the circle's overlapping the horizontal line. So let's create a second circle. And then if you can just take note at north where they are intersecting at the top, our third circle is going to go there. And we follow that through. So our fourth is going to be here. You can mark them as you go around. Five. bottom and seven and you have your seed of life okay we're going to do another layer of circles now take note have a look at your page look at the intersections on the outside there are six of them mark them one two three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to do another layer of six, keeping the radius the same size. So I always like to start on the left and work my way around. One, two, three, focus on those points, work your way around. South, okay, okay so once you've done your second layer of six circles, I'd like you to take note at these points on the outside, I'd like you to take your compass point and I would like you to just pop it on one of those intersections and just swing and mark and swing and mark on the other side and repeat on all of those points swing and mark swing and mark 
We're imagining putting another layer of circles on here, but I'm just going to pop the marks in. We don't need the full circles. And that is why we call the Flower of Life an invisible blueprint. So just count for me. You should have 12 marks on the outside. The next step is turning all of these circles into hexagons. So these points on the outside, let's just join them up. So you could go around and just join all of these up on the outside. What I'm going to do, because I like to have a system, that's obviously a horizontal line. I'm going to pop in the rest of my horizontal lines. So I'm just focusing on my horizontals. So I just slide my ruler down. And what you will notice is when you go from the feathers points away, which you should always do for accuracy, I have collectively created the tops of two hexagons on each of these sides. So we're going to just drag our ruler down and pop a third in. The horizon's already in the centre. And count, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven horizontal lines all up. Okay, my next step, I am going to take my ruler and I'm going to pop it on the outside here. That's going to be one side of one side of my hexagon. And then you just drag your ruler. I'm going to work down the page. Drag your ruler to the next points. Keep sliding. Try and be as accurate as you possibly can be. I know you're not computers. This is where a really sharp pencil comes in handy. And it's so much more pleasing when you have a sharp pencil. Okay, and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let's go the other way. So working down from the opposite side. Okay, our second layer is complete. Now we're going to move on to our third layer. Okay, my next step. I am going to put in some six-pointed stars in the center of these hexagons. By doing that, again, I like to have a system. I'm going to do all of my vertical lines first. So I'm going to start from the left and work my way towards the right. One. Three. I count out loud. Um, it just helps a lot. And it's fun. Whoops, ignore that. Okay, so we're going to work from this side down. I'm hoping you notice that everything's parallel. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to work up the other side. And just check you have all of the lines. I can tell that I'm missing one just here. Sometimes it's really nice to just take a little step back and look at it from afar. Okay, for the next step, which is actually going to be bringing our pattern to the surface, what I'd like you to take notice of is that point there to here. That is going to be our new radius. So grab your compass and make sure that it's bang on. It needs to be that radius. So from there to there. So I'd like you to focus on your center circle. This is my center circle which has a six pointed star in the center and just take note of the hexagon that's in in the center of that star and where these diagonal lines are passing through that hexagon. Let's just mark them for me please. These are our point of reference. We are just focusing on the center circle. Please try to isolate the rest of your page. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to take our compass point. I'm going to start on the top left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing from the hexagon, not from the circle, from the hexagon. And that is going to swing through that intersection and it is going to join into the center. I will repeat on this point because we are going to do that six times from the hexagon, passing through to the center, following in the same direction. The motion stays the same. So I'm not going to go that way, am I? I'm going to keep from the hexagon to the center. Again, you'll probably notice I like to have a system from the hexagon to the center. You can even go from the center to the hexagon. Same process. Center from the center, so from the center to the hexagon, and you will get this beautiful spiral happening. So concentrate on that and pause me for a bit. Okay, you are going to repeat that another six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to go to the left star, and I'm going to start in the same place, top left. I'm going to swing the center, swing to the center, swing to the center. And you will notice that you will get this beautiful wave happening. They will join. The meeting point is that line here. And keep, keep going. 